I know, you're surprised, aren't you? You saw the title and you thought, wait, what? Is this real? Is this clickbait? No, it's not clickbait. This has been in the pipeline for a very, very long time. Tomorrow I am having rhinoplasty surgery and septoplasty surgery. Some of you may have seen this coming given the horrendous shape of my nose from the side, as a lot of people online like to point out, it's not a very nice nose. I have never liked it, but I don't think that I would be undergoing this surgery if it weren't for my breathing problems. I broke my nose five times as a child. I got hit in the face with a basketball. I fell face first when running. I got hit in the face with a baseball bat. I was underneath the table when I was quite young and I stood up and somehow because I'm uncoordinated, smashed my face into the edge of the table. And the last one, I fell out of a shopping trolley. Yes, back when children were allowed to ride in shopping trolleys, I was standing in the front of the trolley and I leaned a bit too far forward and fell face first out of the trolley into the ground. Broke my nose five times and because of that, I've never been able to breathe. Basically, if I want to be able to breathe without my nose making like a whistling sound, I kind of have to push on it like this. If you listen, and then if I do, can you hear that? Watch my nostrils. Watch, just let me zoom this, Archie, that's right, wow. Can you see that? See how it like collapses? It's been like that as long as I can remember. And if it weren't for the breathing problems, I don't think I would undergo such a big surgery just to sh change the shape. But because I need to have my breathing fixed, I mean, I'm not gonna go under anesthetic and be on the operating table and not have them take out the bump in my nose. I have been planning this since 2010, I would say. In year 11 at school, I said to my parents, mom, dad, I want a nose job because I don't like the shape of it. And also, I can't breathe. They said, well, you know, that's a very big operation and you're still very young. Like in 2010, I was 16. My parents would have had to have paid for it and, and it wasn't life threatening or anything. So obviously we weren't gonna do that. As soon as I finished school and I was in university, I saved up enough and I could have got it done. And then every time I thought to myself, this is it, I'm gonna do it. I chickened out and I was like, I'm not gonna do it. I can't do it. I can't do this. I can't go ahead with this. I will just put up with the bad breathing and I will put up with the bullying and I will just not look at myself from the side. But last year it got really bad. The breathing is worse now than it's ever been. So in January I said to myself, that's it, I'm gonna do it. I, I had the money saved up for like three years or four years, but every time I went to do it, I chickened out. But in January 2019, I was like, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna get this operation. I'm sick and tired of not being able to breathe. I'm sick and tired of the shape. I'm gonna do it. So I spent, I would say two to three months researching. I found a doctor that I thought would be the right doctor for me. I found this doctor because there was one particular image of a patient that popped up online when I was doing my research and her before and after photo was the most glorious thing I've seen in my entire life. It was the most beautiful nose I've ever seen. And I went, whoever did that, I want that doctor. So I found that doctor. I went and saw him in like, I think it was June or July. And I didn't really like his attitude. Um, I, t I did a little bit of video footage I, on the day when I went there. He didn't listen to anything I had to say. He basically gave me this before and after photo. He took a picture of me and then he said, this is the nose I'm gonna give you. And I was like, Oh, it's a little bit too small. I, d I don't really want a small nose like that. I just kind of want the bump gone and I want the tip raised a little bit. Like, that's a very small nose. And he was like, this is the nose I'm gonna give you. And I was like, um, why? And he said, this is, this is the only uh, shape that you can have based on the surgery that we've got to do to fix your breathing problems. He said, you've got a deviated septum, it's collapsed on the left. The reason that you can't breathe is because the cartilage in the side of your nose is very weak. So obviously, as I showed you guys, when I breathe in, it kind of like sucks in like that. And he said, apparently my cartilage is very weak. So he said what I would have to do, they would have to go in and take some cartilage either from behind my ear or from inside the nose somewhere. And they would have to put the cartilage in here and in here to reinforce it. So he said, what's gonna happen is you can either have better breathing or you can have a nicer nose, but you can't have both. So he said what they'd have to do is inside here and here, they would have to put cartilage. Sorry, I'm gonna put my fingers up my nose. You can screenshot this and make a meme out of it if you have to. He said, we're gonna put cartilage like that and it's gonna make your nose wider. So he put these two little popsicle sticks up here like this and this, and he said, that's gonna be the shape of your nose when I'm done. You can either have better breathing or a wider nose. And I thought, surely not. 
surely, surely not. Now, the thing when you're undergoing an operation like this, yes, you may have to pay to have your consultation. It might cost you a couple of hundred dollars to have your initial consultation, and it might take you five months to get that initial consultation. And then maybe you don't like the surgeon or you don't like what they've told you, but you've paid all that money and you don't want to keep waiting, so you just book it. Please don't do that. If you are doing something as extreme as changing the shape of your nose or undergoing sinoplasty or whatever you're doing, see a couple of doctors. <laughs> so he told me that and he told me that he was gonna, you know, make it fatter. I thought, yeah, no, I'm gonna get a second opinion. Then I started to think to myself, Maybe, I'm, maybe I don't want to do this. Maybe I'll just put up with the breathing problems for the rest of my life. I mean, I don't mind the shape that much. I, I really, I don't like it, but if it's going to end up bigger, I don't want to, I don't want to change it like that. So maybe I'm not, I'm just not going to do it. So then I had my wedding and then I got my wedding photos. There's this one picture that really sticks out to me. Do you know the Pokemon Nose Pass? This picture here of me on my wedding day. My hair's all done nicely, and you can see my nose like sticking out from behind my hair, and I look like the Pokemon nose pass. <laughs> and I saw that picture and I was like, who am I kidding? Who am I kidding? I need I need to have this operation. I need to fix the breathing and I need to change the shape. So I went back to the drawing board. I said, mom, can you help me do some more research? So we researched for a bit longer. We found three surgeons that all looked really promising. So I booked in for the first guy and he couldn't see me for two months, but then the other two surgeons, one of them couldn't see me for three months and the other one couldn't see me for six. So I went and saw him and he was wonderful. He was, he listened to everything I had to say. Whereas the other doctor, when I sat down, he spent like 30 minutes talking about himself and how great he was. Uh, and then he told me, this is the nose you're gonna have. That's the shape it's gonna be, whether you like it or not. But this other surgeon that I saw, he listened to everything I had to say. He was so patient. He didn't kick me out of the room after a certain amount of time. The first doctor, he was like, oh, sorry, like interrupted me halfway through a sentence. Oh, appointment's over, $300, please buy. This other doctor, he sat with me for as long as I needed. We went over all of my concerns. He was the one that talked about the turbinates, I think they're called. The other doctor didn't mention the turbinates being enlarged, but this new doctor that I saw said, you have enlarged turbinates. I'm really surprised the other doctor didn't tell you that because he put the camera up and he's like, you have very enlarged turbinates and you have a deviated septum. And he also said that it's collapsing because I've got weak cartilage. I said to him, yeah, like the other doctor told me that you have to make it bulkier so it doesn't collapse. And he said, no, that's very outdated. That's very outdated. I'm very surprised the doctor said he would do that. And he said, what I do, this is a newer technique. They still take the cartilage from inside but instead of putting it in here and here to reinforce it from collapsing, they actually put it straight down the center. So picture if you start to set up a tent and you've got a tent peg in the center. If the tent peg is too short for the fabric, the fabric is gonna be like floppy. But if you have a very tall tent peg and it pulls it taut, then the fabric isn't gonna sag. I hope that makes sense. So he said what we do, picture your nose like a tent and picture the center. He said, picture that as the tent peg. He said, we put the cartilage straight down here. And what that does, it pulls and it creates a bit of tension. If I kind of put this tension here like this, and then when I breathe, see it didn't collapse. But then when I let go, did you see how it collapses? But then you put a bit of tension like this. So that's how he explained it to me. And he said, we don't have to make your nose wider to reinforce it. But let's talk about the shape because that is obviously, that's the big controversy. No one's gonna pick on you online for having a septoplasty. If you say, look, I'm having an operation cause I can't breathe. Everyone's like, oh, good for you. But if you say, look, I'm having an operation cause I've got a bump and I don't like it. They start leaving hate comments. I don't know why. <laughs> when I look off to my right, I really, really like the way that my face looks. I think I look quite nice when I look like this. I'm just gonna take a screenshot. Now, when I look to my left, do you see that I look like a different person? Because to me, I don't like the way that I look when I look to the left. If you go back through all my YouTube videos and all my pictures on Instagram, you'll see I always look to the right. And I actually, I got my nose piercing done in 2010 as a reminder to myself that the nose piercing can't be in the picture. And if the nose piercing isn't in the picture, I look nice. For the first year of my channel, people didn't realize that I had a nose piercing because I, I would always be like, hey everyone, it's me, Alex, you know, and like, you, you can't see it. So when I look off to the left, then that's when people say, oh, you've got a nose piercing. We'll take a screenshot. And then to the right. I have a bump on the left side of my nose bridge here. When I look directly to the side, you'll be able to see, I have quite a, a droopy tip in cosmetic surgery, they say that for a more feminine shape, you want that angle to be higher. If I do it from the side and I lift up the tip, 
But then when I look at myself from the front, now you can see my nostrils, and I don't like the look of nostrils from the front for myself. So I said to the doctor, is it possible to bring the tip up without seeing my nostrils from the front? And he said, yes, I think so. We should be able to lift up the tip so it's higher, but manipulate this skin so that the nostrils are not showing as much. Does that make sense? And I'm very nervous because I like my face from the front. I don't really want it to change, but if I want it to change from the side, it kind of does have to change from the front. And that is what I'm really, really nervous about. The surgeon said to me, because there's actually a lot we can do. There's a lot there to work with. And he said, I could basically give you any nose you want. And I was like, really? Because the other guy said, you can have this, it's this or nothing. And he's like, I don't know why he would have said that. So he brought up a projection. You know, he took a picture of my face from the side, this picture here, and he started playing around with it. And I was saying to him, no, I don't like that. Can you take this down? Can you push that out? And he was fiddling around with it on the computer and it just, it wasn't looking right. And I was like, hang on. Can I, can I use Facetune and do it, please? First thing I always do is take out the bump. So I take that out, see it looks okay. But when I zoom out again, down here just looks a little bit too low. I probably have to push the tip in a little bit. So you push the tip in and zoom out. It looks okay, but to me the tip still looks a little bit bulbous. This is the picture that I gave the doctor. <laughs> Now, what I did, this is in Photoshop, I put my old nose underneath. I would like him to lower the radix because my radix is very deep. I said, I want you to remove the hump, refine the tip because my tip is quite big, rotate the tip, obviously, because the tip hangs down. So I want it rotated upwards and he was more than happy to work off that photo. But the thing is, if you're having a rhinoplasty, it's never going to be perfect. All the doctors stress this to you. They all say, you can't aim for perfection. You can just aim for an improvement. My nose isn't going to be perfect, but it's going to be better. As long as I can breathe better and as long as the bump is gone, I'm going to be happy. Anyway, operation is in less than 12 hours now. This is the last photo I'm, I'm gonna, gonna get I'm with gonna you. look straight at you. Okay. Wait, I wanna get one of me kissing your nose because it's perfect. No! Oh, yes! oh, that's the cutest thing. <laughs> Goodbye to the nose. Goodbye, nose. Mm. Au revoir. We will see you when you're... Mm. Bump. Bump. It'll be a different nose after tomorrow. Although at first you're gonna look like an absolute mess. It's like someone's come along and gonk. So when you come see me at the hospital, I want you to vlog it. Okay. On, just on your phone is okay. Uh. But just like... Archie, we're having a moment for the camera here. No, no. Shh, shh. Inside voices. Thank you. No. <laughs> Okay, I'll, I'll see you at the hospital. See you at the hospital. All right, bye-bye, nose. When we get a new beak tomorrow, we won't be matching anymore. Hmm? No kisses for a long time. You won't be allowed to come anywhere near my nose. Because what if you bite it? And it, it's going to be hurting. And then if you bite it, it would be hurting more. You wouldn't do that, would you? We're at the hospital. I am shitting bricks, like 10,000 bricks, enough to build a house. This is it. I think that this is the very last time my nose is gonna be on camera. You're not getting your nose removed, are you? This is the last time my nose in this form will be on camera. This is not its final form. This feels very surreal. I constantly feel like I'm gonna vomit. <laughs> Just like nerves. You mean your heart rate of 100 doesn't give it away? I don't even know what to say. How do I transition into the next scene where I'm gonna have bandages all over my face? Yeah, Dan, quick, punch me. <laughs> Hello, friends. The time is well after 2 p.m. My operation started at about 8.30. I feel okay, there is definitely tension in the top of my nose. I've been told that day one and day two, you feel okay because you're so pumped full of drugs, but then day three hits you and uh, it gets bad. I don't really have any bruising around my eyes at the moment, but it, it will come. I promise you it will come. I'll tell you what, they brought me lunch and they said I have to eat something before I can have my painkillers. Eating is so painful. And you know what's even more painful? The pain in my soul, <laughs> knowing 
that the things that I love the most hurt me the most. I started eating it and then when you swallow, you kind of irritate the nasal cavity. Oh my God, it's so painful. I watched a couple of nose job vlogs and a lot of people are like, oh, day one, I feel fine. I don't feel fine. I'm gonna try and get some sleep. If I drift off, hopefully the pain will drift off with me. So I just woke up from a nap and this whole thing is covered in blood. Okay, so he changed it and gave me a new one. I said, at what point should I be worried about the amount of blood coming through? And he said, if we have to change this every 30 minutes when it gets soaked like that, then we should be worried. That one was two hours though. Well guys, it's been about five hours now since surgery. I'm in so much pain. Not only did I have septoplasty, but I had a bilateral terminoplasty too put the description up it is often performed to relieve the symptoms and side effects of nasal obstruction so it's part of the reason that i couldn't breathe was i had enlarged turbinates this thing here it's plastic and it's i guess it's kind of like pinched around my nose I actually up until now i thought it was uh, like fabric and i thought how is fabric going to stop the swelling and keep it in place but it's actually plastic but anyway i i want to see the tip so epitome of ugly cry. <laughs> it's all swollen right now, so it's only gonna, you know, look better from here. <laughs> operation because it makes lots of blood come out <sighs> if you've lived your whole life with an issue with your face that everyone makes fun of and there's nothing you can do about it and then you change it people say the most horrible things about people that get plastic surgery when it can bring so much joy to someone and change their entire life I just can't believe it because of like five hours full of that pain that I felt about the way that I look. I went to sleep and I woke up and it's gone. Dinner is served. <laughs> this is really good. It's as good as you'd get in a cafe. Maybe that's the medication talking. Oh, I have bruises. <gasps> I didn't have bruises like 10 minutes ago. Damn it, I wish I'd felt a time lapse. Oh my God, I can't believe how quickly I'm bruising. Holy crap. What do you think? I actually, I cried. I was so happy. So to see this thing around my nose, it's Hold like on. a- If you're happy with this, you're gonna love it when it hits. I know, I know. <laughs> Bye -bye. I can't see them. <laughs> okay. I suppose you wonder why I've gathered you here today. I imagine you're going to talk about like our growth this quarter and um, get some like aggressive sales tactics, like train us better. This is not a multi-level marketing with pitch trading. Yeah, because see, Alice welcome is, to Alice my is MLM. Like no it's a pyramid job. scheme for nose jobs. You get a nose, nose job. job. You get a nose job. We all get nose jobs. <laughs> Do we actually get like normal jobs? Or no, 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 there's no, there's no normal, normal jobs here. Sam, yeah. what part of MLM don't you understand? Well, see, look, if you, if you gave me a job that gave me, like, financial security, I could breathe easier. I look cute. Even with a stump face, I look cute. You do, but put your face in. I mean, I guess it is probably made of the same stuff. They just pack it full of absorbers, things. Minty <laughs> fresh. Yeah. Okay, does it have any aroma? You know nothing about tampons, do you, Johnstone? <laughs> So it's 8.40pm and I, at the moment, I actually just feel like I have a cold. 
All the pain is gone. I've just had two Panadol. I feel like I've got a cold. The bruising has shifted a little bit further down. I kind of look like I've got war paint on. Thank you, Sam. You're welcome. Wait. Sam's braiding my hair for me because- I can't do it. And he does it better than Alex does, apparently. He, well, he does it 10 wow. times better than me. Well, my face has changed again since, oh, look, look at the bruises now. Every time I turn on the camera, the bruises are different. Thank you, Sam. You're welcome, Alex. You're a legend. Well, it's 10.40 p.m. Obviously, I have a huge amount of swelling around here. I can't believe it. I wonder what I'm gonna look like in the morning. I wonder if it's just gonna keep going and going and going. I'm gonna end up looking like uh, that child from American Horror Story. Even looking as terrible as I look, I still feel amazing about the way that I look, if that makes any sense at all. I'm gonna try and get some sleep now. Oh my God. It's 8 a.m. Piece of breakfast, prunes, yogurt, soy milk, cranberry juice, I think, because I can't really see it. They want to send me home today. Let me repeat. They want to send me home like this. It's 10 a.m. I can't really see anything. I can just see out of a little tiny slit in this eye. Lunch is served. It's a roast beef salad. I can't really see it though to eat it. I'm having a lot of difficulty swallowing, so I don't know how I'm gonna go with this. Oh, hello. Good to see you again. I can't believe that you're still watching and I haven't scared you away. This bruising looks better than any eyeshadow I've ever done. She's rocking a smoky eye. I need to hold my eye open to see my lunch. Chewing really hurts. When you chew, you use all the muscles in your face. There's huge amounts of pain up here when I chew. I'm officially 24 hours post-op now. You guys might remember that this is what I looked like at this time yesterday. Imagine if I woke up tomorrow and it looked worse. How does it get worse from here? Do I just turn into a giant blueberry and roll away? <laughs> Have you seen my face yet? No. Are you sure? You didn't notice it when you walked in? I, I didn't you haven't seen it yet? Can you open your eyes? <laughs> oh my god. I, I uh, wouldn't even know it was you that was standing in front of me, other than I could hear your voice. But if I do this, oh, oh I like your haircut, Daniel. Oh, <laughs> you look lovely. <laughs> he had a haircut this morning. Can you believe how much I've changed in 24 hours? No. I can't open my eyes. That's why they didn't send me home. I was like, I can't open my eyes. <laughs> I can't see. Oh. <laughs> Please don't send me away. <laughs> Would you like to come have a look? No, don't <gasps> Damn, Alice. Where'd she get that eyeshadow? That coverage is like amazing. Oh, it's, it's the new Morphe Jacqueline Hill collab. Is this what you thought I would look like today, Sam? I mean, I didn't know what to expect. <laughs> I didn't expect this. 5 p.m. Dinner is served. I'm so hungry, but eating really hurts. 
I don't feel any pain in my nose until I start chewing. Actually, the majority of the pain is coming from my left eye. I think it's so swollen that it's actually kind of like curled in on itself. So normally the eyelashes stick out like that. But the eyelashes are kind of doing this and touching my eyeball. You're coming with me on a journey. I have here nasal spray. And I also have this antibiotic ointment. It's called eye ointment, but you're supposed to use it on my nose. So what I'm meant to do is use this with cotton buds and put it around the stitches. But because I've got a lot of kind of like crusty blood around here, I'm going to use this one. Am I supposed to spray this up my nose? Surely not. I don't want to do that. That sounds painful. I'm a genius. It's 9pm, my eyes are a slightly different shape now to what they were before. I've got my crease back. Wow, this is so swollen, it's like, I can feel it's all liquid when I tap it. It's like jelly. It's just fascinating, honestly. I think the only thing I can do now is go to bed. It's 9pm, they just gave me some painkillers. Hopefully that'll knock me out. I wish there was a painkiller that would make me stop singing Mr. Mistopheles in my head. It's uh, 7 a.m. First time looking in the mirror today. Well, my eyes are open, at least. I guess that's better than what it was before. Uh, I think I'm being discharged today. I'm actually gonna go stay in a hotel, a really cheap hotel just down the road because I don't wanna go home because one, Archie, feathers and bird poo, and that's not safe or clean for me, but also it would be pretty stressful for him. I don't want him to see me like this. So Daniel will pick me up today and take me to that hotel and I'm gonna have to check in looking like this. Hello sir, room for one please. No, I'm not mistaking the hotel for a hospital. I just finally realized what I look like. You know Maz from Star Wars, <laughs> when she takes off her goggles and then she comes in really close and looks at Ray. Dear child, I see your eyes. You already know the truth. What time is it? 10 o'clock? 11 o'clock. Uh, day of being discharged, husband has come to rescue me. I feel very out of it. Say bye bye to the hotel room. This is the hospital room. Uh, what? Oh. Yeah, I'm the hospital room. This is the hospital room. Okay, I'm at my hotel now. It's really nice. It's just a bed, there's a couch, and there's a desk. There's a bathroom there. My nose feels like it's really, really full of liquid. It feels like I filled up my nose with liquid and then put plugs in it to keep the liquid in there. That's what it feels like. My left eye is so bad. It looks like it's all bloody on the surface of my eye. Can you see that in the corner? Oh God, my eyes look so bad. Well guys, it's 7.50 PM. I'm officially two hours off painkillers because my mom took my bag of medication with her when I left the hospital. She went home and she was supposed to come here but there's a really really bad storm and uh, there's trees down all over the road and stuff and uh Anyway, long story short, she can't get here at the moment, so I've been off painkillers for two hours and I feel like I've been hit by a truck. Here I was saying for the past two days, oh, the pain really isn't that bad. It doesn't hurt. Try it without painkillers. I just called our friend Grace, who lives a couple of minutes down the road. I said, help, help, please bring paracetamol, please. I'm actually getting a huge huge amount of pain in my two front teeth so much pain in my teeth not pain in the nose but my teeth are like throbbing and i feel like they're gonna fall out any second i feel like someone's punched me in the mouth the nose is just kind of like pulsing and throbbing it's not necessarily painful but the teeth are painful all of this is very painful it's very hard to eat because obviously i can't breathe through my nose so i've got to take a few small bites swallow inhale eat a bit more swallow inhale anyway hopefully grace will get here in a couple of minutes with the paracetamol because i don't know if i can keep going with this pain it hurts so much eee. <gasps> oh my god <laughs>
You look like a bear. That's the one. Yay! I the, um, like my new face. Well, the, the color yeah, scheme goes absolutely. with your hair. <laughs> I love the makeup of it all. It's yeah. really the flawless. Right. That work for you. <laughs> Blended flawlessly. <laughs> I am shooketh. Hey guys, I just wanted to share with you my secret for getting rid of your under eye creases. Your concealer will apply flawlessly after this one simple trick. Just get your nose broken in three places and look, all the under eye creases are gone. Can you imagine how nicely my concealer is going to go on now? And the setting powder too, it's not going to crease at all. It's about 9pm. The Panadol that Grace brought me has kicked in. I feel so much better. The pain of my teeth has gone away now because of the Panadol. My mum and dad are gonna get here soon with the end node. For whatever reason, the left eye is still so much worse than the right eye. I don't know why. Fingers crossed that in the morning, things will look normal. Wow, look at that. Can you see that right there? Look, that's, that's a reflection of a reflection and it looks like a ghost. And worst of all, it looks like a character from Cats. Every all alone in the moonlight I can dream of the old days I was beautiful then All right guys, we're back with the fancy camera No more vlogging on the iPhone So are you ready to see my face in all its high definition glory? I don't think that you're ready Wow, wow So uh, it's Monday, 62 hours now almost since surgery. It has been a roller coaster, I'll tell you that. You know, this this sort of comparison photo between when I first came out of surgery and then exactly 24 hours later, that was wild. The swelling around my eyes, I could not even open them. Uh, I still can't take a single breath through my nose. Apparently some people can breathe. Apparently the swelling isn't that bad inside that they can breathe at this point. There's no breathing here. Every time that I try to clean out my nostrils, I put the cotton tip in and it won't go very far. I don't know if it's because the splint things that I've got in there, or if there's like dried up blood that's stopping it, but because I don't know what it is, I don't want to push it. You know, if I was like, oh, get that gunk out of there, that's just crusty blood, and then I pull out my stitches or something, you know, so I'm really, really nervous to put the cotton bud up there and give it a proper clean out. So I've emailed the doctor and I just said, look, is that thing at the entrance of my nostril, is that blood or is that the split? Because I don't know how far up the splints go. So when they get back to me, hopefully I'll get an answer about how intensely I should be excavating my nostrils. As you can see down here, I'm really swollen. Especially here, I don't know why here specifically, but there's a huge amount of like swelling just here. The bruising has obviously come down a little bit. I know I should be eating, but I can't stomach very much. I've been eating salads every day and that's about it. Uh, every time I try to drink more than just a little tiny sip, the water kind of goes back up my nose and it's really awful. It's like when you jump into a pool or something and you get water in your nose, it feels like that. The sleeping situation is horrible. You have to sleep upright on the bed. It's so uncomfortable, but if you lie flat, apparently your head will swell up like a soccer ball. Because I can't breathe through my nose, I wake up every couple of hours. My mouth is so dry just from sleeping and breathing through it that I just have to keep sipping a bit of water and, and sort of rinsing my mouth with it. I woke up at like 4 a.m. this morning and there was literally like froth in my mouth. It was awful and uh-oh, now my nose is leaking. Sorry, I don't want anyone to have to look at that. Wait, what I find crazy is just how much my face shape has changed. It's so crazy how down here this is wider now, up, even up here is wider, to the side it's just like completely round. Look at this side, look how bad that is. What I'm still getting used to is this big gap here. I was so used to my nose kind of hanging down to about there and there not being very much room between the top lip and the tip of my nose, but now look how much room there is. No, I don't have an appointment until the 20th, so that's like a solid 13 days after the surgery. Most people get this thing taken off after a week, but <clears throat> I don't know if he'll take mine off at the appointment on the, you know, 13 days later, but I'm happy to leave it on for a bit longer. They do say that the longer that you leave this on, the better, because as soon as you take it off, all the swelling is gonna come to the nose and it's gonna really push it out. So the longer you leave it on, it gives time for the swelling to kind of drain. Ow! I just hit it. I need to stop using my hands so much. My dad was here last night and I was like, oh dad, this, that, and the other, and I was talking like this, and he's like, put your hands down. Last night in the middle of the night, I guess I must have 
how to do Cheetos, and I was like, eh, get the itch, whack. No amount of painkillers will stop that pain. Anyway, I'm gonna have a nap. I'll catch you guys later. Well, it's about midday. I think I have prepared some tea bags because I've been told that tea bags apparently help to reduce swelling. Let me brew a fresh meme for you. What's the tea, sis? Guys, I just have a uh, one question for you. Do you want to play a game? Come to see the new facerini. Wow. Look down here. Yeah, I know. It looks like you've swallowed acorns. Like acorns. you're storing nuts for the winter. So Alex invited me to come see her, and this is what she's doing right now. Just prime company, Alex. You doing good over there? You, you good? Hmm? You happy there? Yeah. You don't look fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> yes, my eyebrows are tea bags, so what? <laughs> what of it? It's 10.14 at night. My face looks a fair bit better than it did this morning. I'm really, really surprised that the tea bag trick actually worked. My mother-in-law said to me, are you putting tea bags on your face? And I said, uh, I hadn't, hadn't really thought to do that. It did really help. Look, the swelling all around my eyes has definitely come down. We have thunk tea bagging is good for you. Sam's going to rebraid my hair because I am such a mess right now. I haven't brushed my hair in days. I'm wearing the same t-shirt. <laughs> my face looks like a soccer ball. Why don't you start doing hair tutorials, Sam? Who's, who's gonna take my hair tutorials? Daniel. You could teach Daniel how to braid hair. <laughs> Whoa! How sick is that? You should leave your hair in a fishtail braid more often. <laughs> wow, look at that! <laughs> look how that's come out. That Gee, dope. look at it. I don't look half bad, even with the small little face. I can't have a shower to wash my hair. I can have a shower for my body, but I can't put any water on my hair because the You'll doctor the, the doctor said you can't get this plaster wet. I had my first follow-up appointment on Thursday. I'm absolutely terrified of that appointment because at that appointment, they're gonna take out the splints in my nose and I do not do well with stitches and things being removed. The last time I had an operation and I went in and had stitches removed, he used some tweezers and some scissors and he started kind of like digging into my skin a little bit to snip the stitches and I fainted. So I remember my mum screaming. It was almost like that scene in Harry Potter, you know, where she's oh. like, Harry! So that was me when I had my stitches removed last time. And I'm certain that's going to happen when they take these splints out because I watched someone else have it done. They go in with some scissors, they snip the stitches that's holding the splints in place. One, that's terrifying. Two, they put like tweezers up there and they yank out these things and apparently they're like this long. Apparently they're even longer than your nose is. Like they go so far back into your nasal cavity that they're like that long. Apparently as it comes out it kind of like makes this disgusting noise. Probably the same sound that um... Gooigi makes when he goes through a door. <laughs> I don't think he's gonna take the cast off, so we're not gonna see the nose yet. So, um... Oh, oh wow! God, I wish my face wasn't so f***ed up right now. I would look so cool. That's alright, we'll do it again later. Look, there's Dan. Hi. What do you think of my face? Beautiful as always. Oh. <laughs> I look like the mood emoji. Emergency. Beep, beep, beep. Evacuate now. Evacuate as directed. Evacuate as directed. Beep, beep, beep. The fuck? Evacuate now. Evacuate as directed. Oh, hi, um, as are we directed. supposed to evacuate our rooms? Beep, beep, beep. That's okay, thank you. Beep, beep. Emergency. So they evacuate said, as directed. we walked around and we can't beep, see any fire. Emergency. But they said they can't turn off the alarm themselves. The fire alarm has to be turned off by the fire department. There's all the rest of the guests. I'm really annoyed because I'm running low on my prescription painkillers. I've been deciding not to take them at night. You know, only when I really, really need them. And I was in so much pain before I went to sleep tonight, but I was like, it's okay, I'm gonna fall asleep, and I'm gonna sleep through the pain, and I'll wake up in the morning and have one. So I was sound asleep, free from the pain, and then this happens, and I'm woken up, and the throbbing in my nose is so strong. And like, if I take a painkiller now, it's gonna take half an hour for it to work. 
So I'm still gonna be awake in pain for the next half hour, at which point this will probably switch off and I'll go back to sleep. Waste of a painkiller. What a pain. Hey, look who turned up. Hello. Welcome. Thank you for turning off the alarm. Now what? I just realized how terrifying I must look to the people that are down on the street. I was standing there looking out the window and I realized there's a couple of people down there looking straight back up at me. <laughs> and what they're looking at is uh, probably quite terrifying. It's me standing there looking out the window with the red and the blue flashing across my battered and beaten face. I must look like something straight out of a horror movie right now. Evacuate as directed. Evacuate as directed. Well, guys, the whole uh, evacuate now emergency situation last night really took a lot more out of me than I realized because it's 2 p.m. now, which means that I missed my midday medication by a couple of hours, which means that I'm in a lot of pain. I'm so surprised that there's bruising here. I've got no idea why. At least most of the puffiness is gone. Oh, do I have my under eye creases back? Yes, there they are. Nothing will ever get rid of them. I've just come to lie down because I feel really dizzy after cleaning out my nose. But listen to this. That was me breathing in. Out. In. Wow. My first breath in through my nose. Only through this nostril though. The right nostril is bigger than the left. So I hope that this is just swelling. I hope that they haven't, you know, like stuffed up or something and accidentally sent me home with this one smaller nostril than the other. Well guys, it's 2 p.m. on Wednesday. We are 120 hours post-op. Today is the very first day that the face ID of my iPhone recognizes my face. Look. Ha <laughs> ha! The right nostril is recovering really, really well. When I put the cotton bud up there now, I can go up a lot further and it doesn't hurt when I move it around. But the left, there's something really wrong with my left nostril. I'm going in tomorrow for a, a follow-up appointment, so I'll mention it to the doctor, but it's so sore and I can't put the cotton tip up very far at all. It's really inflamed and touching it anywhere on the inside of this nostril is really painful. This nostril, some airflow is happening, but this one is completely blocked and also very, very, very sore. Uh, I'm really scared about my appointment tomorrow. One, it's not a full week yet. Tomorrow's appointment is actually six days because the surgeon didn't have a, a free slot exactly one week after. Here, they had a free slot on the sixth day or on like the 15th day or whatever it was. I am kind of worried because it's not the full week that uh, you know, if he goes to take the splints out of my nose, they won't be fully healed up in there or, or so, I, I don't know, I'm really nervous. Hello, it's 5 a.m. on Thursday. Uh, I woke up a couple of hours ago, uh, I was just in a heap of pain. Like I said, I stopped taking the oxycodone unless I desperately need it. I'm surviving on paracetamol at the moment, but I'm getting this terrible, terrible pain in my left nostril. It's almost unbearable. But on the plus side, this is the first time, listen to this. That was me breathing in using both nostrils. I know. It's not enough to take a real breath, you know, like if someone put their hand over my mouth, I would definitely suffocate. But there's just this little tiny bit of air going up through both nostrils now. Took a very long time for the left nostril to have any movement at all. The skin on my eyes is so dry, it's so itchy, I hate it. I definitely recommend if you're doing this, you need some sort of ointment for your eyes, it's awful. Now, I think that the doctor will probably offer to take this cast off, but I'm going to ask him to leave it on longer. At the moment, it is Schrodinger's nose. It's either a really nice nose or it's an awful nose. It either really suits me or it doesn't suit me at all. The longer you leave the cast on, the better it is for your recovery anyway. So I'll probably just ask him to take out the internal stuff and leave the outside.
Hello, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but the doctor did not let me film it. He said you can take a photo though. So I do have a picture for you guys, but before I show you, can I just say, one, no pain at all. Uh, I took the painkiller before I went. He also put uh, numbing spray in my nose. It was a quick snip snip of these two stitches that I didn't even feel. And then he pulled that one out and I went, wait, is that it? And I looked at it, it was perfectly clean, crystal clear, perfectly clean. And then he took the other one out, perfectly clean as well, didn't even feel a thing. So here's the picture of them. That's exactly what it looked like when it came out of my nose. And my doctor said to me that he was really impressed with how clean my nose was. He said, well, you've done a really good job taking care of it. There's no crusty blood, it's fine. But obviously we didn't take this off. We're not taking this off until my appointment next Thursday. So that's exactly one week from today. Well guys, it's Valentine's Day. It's the evening now. When the doctor took the stents out yesterday, I was able to breathe pretty well through my nostrils, but for some reason today, they are closed up. They're sealed. <laughs> I don't know if there's something wrong, I don't know if this is supposed to be happening or what, but particularly my left nostril, it's actually worse than it was when I had the stent in. And uh, when I tip my head back and I look at the shape of my septum, it seems to be like, like pushed out kind of far. I know you probably can't see on here, but on the left side, like the septum sticking out and there's inflammation and there's like not really any room in there. Whereas when that thing was in there before, this wasn't pushed out like that. So part of me is kind of worried that that septal graft that they put in where they put a new piece of cartilage in the center, I'm worried like has it bent or has it twisted or something? And is that what the bump is? Because it's really, really sore. Also, it could just be swelling. Obviously I've got like a, a week until my next appointment. So I'm hoping that it starts to go down. But it is a, like really concerning that I was able to breathe so freely yesterday and then for some reason today I can't. Uh, I'm going out tonight, it's Valentine's Day and uh, Grace is having a party at her place. So this will be the first time I've actually properly gone out. I'll be seeing my friends for the first time since I got my hair done and also since I got my nose done. Most of them knew I was getting it done. I think there's some people I didn't get around to telling. So I'm gonna go around tonight and uh, ask people their opinions and have a little bit of fun with my friends. So I'll catch you at the party. Look. What's different? Look at this masterpiece. What's different? <laughs> Did you change your hair? Yes, yes. thank you. Oh. <laughs> Pink. It was pink before. Why is it not pink anymore? Just... When did you get it done? Last Friday. Oh, okay. Oh, it looks like someone bashed your real <laughs> Okay, so we started off with neck beard. Okay. My drawing was a neck. It was Chris. Nice. <laughs> then wearing a fedora with a neck beard. Then we ended up with neck beard. Excellent. Good work. Success. We have. <laughs> Why is there an X there? Yeah, uh, not, not the mouth. Not the neck. Just the neck. Just the neck. Uh, we've got neck beard. <laughs> we've <good>. got. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that wins best drawing. <laughs> oh my yeah. god. Hands are hard. Hello, baby. Hello. What's happened to mummy's face? Oh my goodness. What happened? What happened, Daisy? That's on mummy's face. Oh, he looks so frightened. It's okay. No kisses for baby. Absolutely no kisses. You give him a kiss for me. How are you feeling? Oh, man. <laughs> oh, it's my first time seeing you properly. Okay, let me have a look. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Holy shit. Okay. You see, it truly looks like your old nose, but just slightly, slightly, slightly altered. Like yes, you just... slightly altered from the front. Oh my I goodness! Didn't want it to be too different. It looks exactly. Front. Yeah, this is so exciting. <laughs> so exciting! How many days left till the reveal? The reveal is on Thursday. <laughs> hey everyone, it's me, Sam. Nothing's happened to my face, but as you can see. Things have happened to Alex's face, but she's looking better now. My uh, whole top lip is numb, so when I smile... Yeah. <laughs> I look really silly. So what's the difference? <laughs> Sam has driven me to my nail appointment because the painkillers that I'm on mean I can't drive. I'm gonna get black nails. I know it's the coronavirus sitting in. 
Uh, maybe I'm re reverting back to myself from 2012. <gasps> Sophia, look out. I'm getting my cast off tomorrow, uh, and I almost don't want to. This can be you now, with the cast. You know what? It's Schrodinger's nose. Yeah, I'm gonna have a very interesting nose forever. It's just a cast. If I leave the cast on forever, look, I can't love it and I can't hate it because it's it's Schrodinger's nose. Who knows what it looks like? That was a Sam level pun. That was terrible. Okay, so it's Thursday now, and uh, today's the day that I get the big bandage off the beak and we get to see what it actually looks like. The first night that I got home, I was very excited to finally sleep in the same bed as my husband again. And uh, I stayed up for a couple of hours playing uh, Luigi's Mansion and Dan went to bed. After playing until like midnight or whatever it was, I went into the bedroom. Daniel, obviously having not had me there for quite some time, I guess he forgot how to sleep like a normal human. I lay down next to him. He proceeded to roll over and punch me in the nose. <laughs> just, just straight, just... I cried because it hurt so much. I was bawling my eyes out and then he was almost crying because he felt so bad. And then he was like, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I'll go sleep on the couch. I was still sore in the morning when I woke up. But then every night since then, I've slept on the couch because I actually find it better to sleep on the couch because the cushions prop me up and you do need to keep your head up. So this little fellow, I've been trying to keep him away from my face, so he's not allowed to sit on my shoulders. He didn't like the bandage on the nose when I first came home, but he actually hasn't tried to attack it or anything like that. He's been pretty good, but when I go to give him kisses, I just kind of hold the beak. Just hold hold the beak down. Yeah, like that. Just, just to be careful. Oh! I swear I've never hit myself in the face as many times as I have since this operation. You know, I, I went to take my painkillers the other day, and I had the painkiller in my hand, and I went to throw it back into my mouth, and I just punched myself in the face. Just... I could actually completely forget that I had the cast on. I don't even notice it at all. What? Yes, it's coming off today. It's fine. I finally started wearing glasses again, because I worked out I could just wear them like that, and they just sit on the cast, no problem. The funny thing is that uh, I still can't really breathe. I, I can breathe a little bit better through my right nostril than through my left, but my left nostril has been completely blocked this whole time. And in a couple of hours, I'm off to my appointment and I'm getting the cast taken off. And I am both excited and nervous at the same time. He probably won't let me film him taking the cast off, but I did ask him last time, I was like, can I film myself looking in the mirror for the first time? And at first he said no. He doesn't want any filming done in his clinic from the sounds of it. Like he seems like he's pretty private, but I think he might let me like film it selfie mode looking at my nose for the first time. I really hope so because that's a reaction that I want to get on camera. I'm hoping that I'm gonna like it based on my reaction you know, the first day when I saw the tip of my nose and I was so happy and I started crying. I guess I've just had too much time to think about it now, you know? I'm sure that I've just been dwelling on it and thinking about it too much. Hopefully when I see it, I will really, really like it. So the next thing that you guys are gonna see, it'll be me at the doctor's clinic having the reveal. I'm gonna do my eyebrows, do my eyes, cover my little bruises. Oh, speaking of, I guess I should give you like a, another update. Look. Oh dear. <laughs> No, they don't want an update about you, Archie. They want an update about me. The bruises are basically gone. There's just a little bit here, a little bit here. I think they're basically gone from down here. Oh, my eyes aren't back to normal yet. I will definitely feel a lot more human once my eyes go back to normal. That's it, guys. I'll catch you at the doctor's office when I see my new nose for the first time. I'm shaking, I'm shaking. Oh, okay. <laughs> well. Oh, well. <laughs> I love it so much. <laughs> I didn't know if I'd cry or if I'd be like scared. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> I love it so much. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs>
Uh, <laughs> okay, so I'm back home now. That was all obviously very emotional for me. The entire car ride home, every time I'd be driving and I'd look up into the rear vision mirror and I would just burst out crying. <laughs> it's been a couple of hours now and um, I'm over it. I feel, f I feel good. I mean, I, f well, when I say I feel good, I felt good then, that's why I was crying. They were happy tears, but uh, I feel very calm and neutral now. <laughs> so, um, I, I do look different from the front. It's really so emotional for me right now. I can't even begin to explain what I'm feeling. Like, I do this and I'm like, wow. When I look to the left in the past, I, I really hated the way that my face looked when I looked to the left because that was the side that sort of projected outwards. And then when I looked to the right, it was on a dip. My right profile, like I feel like if I took a selfie now and posted it on Instagram, kind of with my head to the side like this, I don't think anyone would know I'd had anything done to my nose. Obviously looking like this, you can tell. Looking like this, I think you can still tell. I did say to the doctor that I was a bit concerned. I thought that this side curved inwards and this side was quite straight. And the doctor said to me, your nose is still very swollen right now. He said, it's gonna be a month at least until the swelling starts to go away. And even then it's gonna be a year a whole year until you know what your nose is actually going to look like. My very strict instructions were every day, a couple of times a day, I have to run my fingers down here and run them up and, and God, it really hurts touching it. But he said, I need to run my fingers like this and that way it's going to help the swelling and it's going to help sort of set it in the right place. He said, I need to do this every day for a month. But interestingly enough, when I run my fingers down here, I get to this point and there's a huge bump there's a really big lump inside my nose. Just here, I can feel it. And it's not on this side. Oh, there's a lump up here on this side, and there's a lump down here on this side. You can't see it on camera, but I can feel it really strongly. This is swelling. So because I had the turbinoplasty and the septoplasty, and they broke my nose in three different spots, it's had a lot of trauma. And I need to tape my nose every single night before I go to bed every night for the next month. So this is the tape here, it's called Micropore. So he said, I need to use three pieces of this. I need to put one at the top and then overlapping the next one here to here and the next one from here to here. He said, don't bring it all the way to the tip. He said, the last piece needs to stop about here. So basically in exactly the same spot that that cast was in, it needs to sit like that. And he said, apparently when I wake up first thing in the morning and I remove the tape, my nose will look different every morning. Today is the 20th of February. So my next appointment is on the 17th of March. So that's my one month post-op appointment. It's crazy because I've been looking at pictures of people that have their noses done and the look of their nose, the day that they have the cast off versus one month after versus like five months versus a year, it keeps changing and it keeps refining. And that just blows my mind because like, I'm really happy with it as it is. I, I If it just stayed like this, I would be overjoyed, but apparently it's just gonna keep looking better and better. So it doesn't feel real. Oh, it's so hard to describe what I'm feeling. Like I look at myself, I'm like, wow, I look awesome. And I'm like, I also look like a different person. I don't like it. But then I'm like, no, I do like it. But then, you know, it's just different. And I'm happy. I'm also nervous about the fact that it's going to continue changing and I don't know what it's going to keep looking like. I've got to get used to it. I really hope that the way that this side sort of curves in a little bit and this side is straight, I really hope that's just swelling. I, I hope that it doesn't, you know, set like that. I'm sure that the doctor didn't look at me on the operating table and say, oh yeah, it curves on that side and it's straight on that side. We'll just leave it like that. I'm sure he knows what he's doing. It's probably just a bit more swelling. Like I did mention, I can't breathe through my left nostril properly and I can breathe through my right nostril. So I'm guessing the left side is just a bit more swollen. That's probably it. But speaking of breathing, look at this. Look at this. So do you guys remember how I told you a lot of my breathing problems came from the fact that the cartilage in my nose was quite weak and it would collapse in on itself and he gave me a cartilage graft. So he's put a piece of cartilage from here to here to reinforce that. Look, I'll put the before of me breathing in and I would breathe in and my nostrils would kind of close. Watch this. It doesn't happen anymore. <laughs> Something else that uh, he did that I didn't know about, he actually took out some stitches from here and here, and he said it was very unusual. He very rarely has to do this, but apparently something, ooh, someone's home. Someone's here. Who's that? Daniel just came home. He hasn't seen the nose yet. I'll just finish what I was saying and then he's gonna come see my nose. So apparently it was so crooked and so deviated or something 
that normally they only break it in certain locations, but he said they actually had to break the bridge of my nose. And I don't know why, but he said because they had to break the bridge of the nose in this unusual spot, that he had to make an incision here and here, something to do with breaking the nose. So I've got these two little marks just there and there from where he had to make an incision. I'm in this predicament now where I don't know if I should put the piercing back in or not. He said to me, the doctor was like, you can put your piercing back in today. Like I do like the piercing though, it's just a cool piercing to have. But now that it's out, I don't know. What do you guys think? Leave a comment below. Should I put my piercing back in? Should I leave it out? Like is this, it's a new nose, new me. Should I have the piercing or not? If I ever want to put it back in, I may have to actually re-pierce it because I think the hole is completely closed up. I don't know. Anyway, I hear movement from Daniel. Are you going to come see? Daniel doesn't know anything. I haven't told him anything. <laughs> you have a nose, right? <laughs> I don't look like Voldemort, if that's what you're worried about. <laughs> Are you ready? Maybe. Yep. Yeah. Oh, wow. It looks so good. Are you happy? Oh. <laughs> I'm so happy. Oh, it's perfect. I cried so hard when he... Took it off. <laughs> and nothing. It doesn't. It doesn't. No, nothing at all. Ah, oh, so trippy. I look like a, like the same person, but I also look like a different person. You've got no hole. The hole's gone. <laughs> well, it's because it's really swollen. Oh, okay. <laughs> Do you like it? Yeah, it looks good. It looks good. Yeah, it looks good. <laughs> Is it what you thought it was going to be? No. It's, really? It's much nicer. <laughs> yeah. I looked in the mirror when he took the cast off and I just started crying. I was so happy. And he said to me, he's like, wow, we don't normally get reactions like that. He was like, Normally people are kind of unhappy when you take the cast off because the nose is so swollen and they're mm. like, that's not what I wanted. Mm. But I was like, already even looking like it looks, it, <laughs> I'm so happy. My mom was so like, my mom was like, my mom started crying and she was like, it's perfect. <laughs> and my dad really liked it too because uh, dad didn't, you know, dad was worried I would look really different. But dad mm. was like, it looks wonderful. It looks mm. so great. <laughs> you look like you. I look like me. Mm -hmm. Just with a scoop nose. And look, it's it, when I look from when I look to the left and I look to the right, I don't have that problem now where when I look to the left it kinda like bumped outwards and I look to the right and it would go in. It's basically the same now. You think? Yeah, I I can't even remember what you look like. <laughs> so weird. It's just like your mental image of someone isn't, you know, one part, it's the sum of everything. That's true. I'm so happy. Oh. <laughs> Don't hit me. Oh. Don't hit my nose oh. again. <laughs> again? I told them what happened. You mean how you came in at like 3am and I threw the blankets off? And punched me in the face. I didn't punch I... you. <laughs> I'm so happy. Please, it was a clear backhand. <laughs> Shh, we can't say that. New face, Alex. <gasps> okay. I think I'm ready. Am I ready, Dan? Do it. Pull it like a band-aid. Rip it. Just pull those. Yeah, there it is. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> no, no, no. Like in, like in the, like in the, like it's. I'm not shooketh. Like I'm not looking like. <laughs> who is this woman? This, this is a different person. I'm like, that's Alex. So it's it's perfect. And, and and breathe for me. Can you can breathe in normally now that it's not putting pressure on the sides? Can you breathe? The nostrils. Yeah, they're not moving. They're not they're not pushing in at all. They're not moving. A and from the side. Yeah, because now it's got that dip and that goes straight. And look at me now. You you've never had your nose broken. As far as I can tell, this nose has never been broken. I know it's been broken three times by a doctor, and I know that your nose has been broken many times as a child. But like now, you've got. It looks You've got normal. no track record. It looks like a normal nose. Now. So you can tell people, I've had my nose broken nine times. No, They'll like... be like, no, you haven't. <laughs> and you're like, actually, I have. But three of those times were corrective breaks. I said to Daniel, is it what you expected? And he was like, no, it's much better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like I agree. Because see, really? I was like, I was getting worried because like you were like, I want this nose to be like this small, and I was like, what if it doesn't suit your face? But like, that's your nose. 
That's that's Alex's nose now. This is perfect. Oh. Oh. Because <laughs> oh. I was thinking, what happens if you take it away and it's like this little pixie nose and it's just, here's Alex's face and it's like someone else's nose just copy pasted, but it's like, no, no. That's, that is all aces. Aces. <laughs> okay, it's Archie's turn to see the nose now. Archie. What do you think, Archie? What do you think of Mummy's nose? What do you think of my beak? Does it look different? Look, Archie, look from the side. Look. What do you think, Archie? It looks different, doesn't it? It looks different! Do you think it's all different now, baby? What do you think? Do you like it? You don't need to look up my nostrils, Archie. You, you don't need to look up there. Yeah, you, you inspecting my nostrils, are you? Here you go. Oh, Peanut! I wanted to find out what you think of my new nose. What do you think, Peanut? Peanut pretty good. Are you ready? Yeah. Three, two, two one. one. Oh, 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 Ready? Yeah. yeah. Okay, it's look. Like you for how to relax <gasps> oh, <laughs> what do you think? Oh, it looks really sad. You like it? Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, it's so different. Yeah, yeah. It really suits you. It looks so different. You think? I do. From the front? Yeah. <laughs> and from the side. It looks so good. Put out your hands. I like shoe things. <laughs> it looks so amazing. It looks perfect. Do I put my nose piercing back in? No. 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 Wait, do you think no just because like you don't want me to hurt myself or do you think I don't need a nose piercing? You don't need it, it's beautiful. Don't ruin perfection. I think you should should leave it for a while. Just try to appreciate the new nose. No, but like do you wear it often? Well I've never taken it out since 2010. Do you miss it? Yeah, do you yeah I do. Oh, well, but everyone I've asked so far says don't put it back. So I was asking everyone on the video, I was like, should I put the nose piercing back in? Because I yeah. will have to re-pierce it. But I'm interested to hear what all my friends well, say. Well, you enjoy it, then yeah. If it course. brings you joy, don't marry Kondo the nose piercing. <laughs> Hi, darling! Yeah, yeah, look at Alex's nose! It looks so good. Doesn't it look amazing? It's really good. It's really good. <laughs> So it's Friday, March the 6th now. So I got the cast taken off on the 20th of February. So that was a Thursday. So it's been exactly two weeks. So uh, in that time, my nose has changed a considerable amount, I would say. I have had a roller coaster of emotions. Like I can't even begin to explain it to you. <laughs> I go from really loving the outcome to thinking I've made the biggest mistake of my life. The biggest thing for me that caused the most problems was this selfie here. I look horrible. But as everyone keeps telling me, as the doctor told me, as I've read online, your nose is swollen for like a year. Just here and here, as you can see in this picture, I'm getting these lines, like here and here, these very deep lines. And to me, when I look at the picture, I think it just looks like, you know, imagine if you've smelt something bad and you kind of like wrinkle up your nose a little bit. And when you wrinkle it, you get these creases in here. Cause you're like, mm. I almost feel like my face permanently looks like I've smelt something bad now. 
And the hardest part of all of this is thinking that it's going to be a year until I know what my nose looks like. So I'm like, no, you can't get worked up now because this isn't the nose. The nose is going to be different in a year. But obviously there's still a side of me that's like, what if it's worse in a year? What if it doesn't get better? What if it gets worse? Just here, see it sort of bulges out a little bit there. And it also, it kind of like looks like my nose is going off to the side. Like it, it doesn't look straight. It looks like it's curving like this and this is all swelling. Now that it doesn't hurt as much anymore, I can actually really properly rub this. And yesterday was the first time that I really got in there and was rubbing it really, really quite forcefully. And I was focusing on this area here where the swelling is and the difference it made after like a 10 minute massage of just pushing on those spots where the swelling is. As I was pushing, there was actually liquid kind of like coming out of my nose, which is there's all this swelling and everything in there. So pushing it is actually working the liquid through. It really straightened it up. But this is another thing that I'm concerned about thinking I was meant to be doing this the whole last two weeks, but I, it was so painful that I was just touching it really lightly and it wasn't doing anything. So I'm kind of worried in that two week window, has my nose now like settled into this shape off to one side because of the swelling? There's a giant lump just here that never used to be there before. It's so solid that no matter how much I rub it, that doesn't go away. So I'm wondering, is that bone? Is that ever going to change in that weird spot? I don't know. I'm obviously going insane. When I look at myself in the mirror, I'm like, my nose goes off to the side like this. And then I'm just saying to myself over and over again, no, it's just swelling. But what if it's not just swelling? What if my nose is crooked now? Uh, that's what it looks like underneath at the moment. So when I give you the check-in in a couple of weeks, you'll be able to see what the stitch area looks like. Let's have a little look from the side because you haven't seen it from the side yet. 